إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله إن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها سوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما Dear brothers and sisters, just as a reminder before we start, make sure your phones are either on silent or better yet switched off so you don't get tempted to check them or send some text messages during the khutbah. And as more brothers will show up, make sure you come closer to, uh, to the front so that they will also have space. Jazakumullah khairan. Dear brothers and sisters, we all commit sins. A Muslim's faith can become weak and he may be overwhelmed by his desires. The shaitan may make the sin attractive to the person. So he commits the sin and falls into something that Allah has forbidden. Some of the sins are those we are perfectly aware of and some we might even commit that we are not even aware of. So we all need forgiveness from Allah and we need to learn how to ask it regularly. We need to make it a habit. And if you don't think that you need it, then it's just shaitan or your own nafs fooling you. As even the best of Muslims from the early generations had the habit of asking for forgiveness of Allah regularly, doing istighfar. That includes the best of creation, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it's narrated that he said, Ya ayyuhan nas, توبوا إلى الله واستغفروه فإن يتوب إلى الله واستغفره في كل يوم مئة مرة which means O oh people repent to Allah and ask for his forgiveness as I ask the forgiveness of Allah and repent to him 100 times a day and subhanAllah it's something so easy that we all can do whether you're in your house doing some chores cooking you're driving your car, you're outside. It's really easy to make use of the time. The easiest, for example, is just saying Astaghfirullah, or saying Astaghfirullah wa tubu ilayh. And also when you say that, try to put your heart into it. Try to think about the meaning of what you're saying, so that it has more effect. And sometimes when you commit sins, and we all commit sins, when you commit a lot of sins, you might feel that you know, you're too far away, you're, you're too far gone, you can't really get back to the straight path anymore. But this is again shaitan. It doesn't matter how big your sins are, as long as you repent sincerely, Allah will forgive you. Allah says in the Quran, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقَنَتُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ which means, say your ibadi, means my slaves, my servants, who have transgressed against themselves by committing evil deeds and sins, despair not of mercy of Allah. Verily, Allah forgives all sins. Truly, He is oft forgiving, most merciful. So anyone who has fallen into sins, you should not despair from the mercy of your Lord. For indeed the door of repentance is open until the sun rises from the west. And the proof of that is what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said. Inna Allah ta'ala yabasutu yadahu bil-layl liyatuba musi'un nahar. 
وَيَبَسُطُ يَدَهُ بِالنَّهَارِ لِيَتُوبَ مُسِيُّ اللَّيْلِ حَتَّى تَطْلُعَ الشَّمْسِ مِنْ مَغْرِبِهَا Which means, Verily, Allah extends His hand out at night in order to accept the repentance of the sinner by day. And He extends His hand out during the day in order to accept the repentance of the sinner by night. Until the day when the sun will rise from its west. In order to understand better how good doing istighfar is for you, listen to this beautiful hadith. The Prophet ﷺ has said, "Man lazim al istighfar, jaal Allah lahu min gulli dhiq makhraja, wa min gulli ham min faraja, wa razaqahu min haythu la yhtasib." Which means, whoever does istighfar means ask for per, uh, pardon of Allah, forgiveness of Allah. Constantly, Allah will make for him a way out of every distress and a relief from every anxiety. And Allah will provide sustenance from him, for him from where he doesn't expect. So, if we make repentance, of course we want it to be accepted. Otherwise, what's the point? So, what are the conditions of a repentance that is sincere, that is accepted, insha'Allah? Number one, is that you stop this sin straight away. You, you give up the sin. Because if while asking for forgiveness, you're already thinking about how you're going to do that sin again, then this is clearly not sincere repentance. Number two is that you regret what has happened in the past. It means you feel bad and you feel remorse about having done that sin. Number three is that you resolve not to go back to the thing that you have repented from. Number four is that you restore people's rights or property in case your sin involved wrongdoing towards others. For example, if you have damaged somebody's property, somebody's house, for example, and you have, let's say, ignored that person, he's been trying to reach you, but you haven't really paid the damages, then you also have to do that. You have to make up that damage before you can expect expect your repentance to be accepted. And number five is that you repent before the agony of death, death is upon you. Now this last point is something we need to be really careful about and not misunderstand. Some people, especially younger people, sometimes think that, ah, it's okay, you know, I can have fun in whatever ways, in whatever sinful ways, as long as someday in the future, when I'm older, I'll repent from it. And the problem with such thinking is that, you know, you might be 20 or 30 years old, but it doesn't give you any guarantee that you will live more time than, for example, a 60 or 70 year old person next to you. None of us know when it's our time to die, so repentance is something you should never delay. So dear brothers and sisters, let us always try to hasten to asking forgiveness and doing sincere repentance. And let's make doing istighfar a daily habit in our lives. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Dear brothers and sisters, when talking about forgiveness, we also have to talk about forgiving each other. And how can we really expect Allah to forgive us if we can't even forgive each other? Sometimes even the smallest of things. The Prophet ﷺ has said, Be merciful to others and you will receive mercy. Forgive others and Allah will forgive you. So learn to let go of your grudges. Learn to forgive, and you'll also see how you yourself will, fe will feel better, insha'Allah. This life is too short to remain upset with someone or keep holding grudges. And subhanAllah, sometimes you have two brothers or two sisters, they had an argument about something five years ago, and they're still not talking. SubhanAllah, this is not Islam, this is not Islam. This is not what the Prophet ﷺ teaches us. 
And this is also exactly something that shaitan wants. He wants to cause this unity amongst us. And to motivate us to be the first person in showing our good behavior, there is a beautiful hadith we should all apply in our lives. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, It is not permissible for a man to forsake his Muslim brother for more than three days, each of them turning away from the other when they meet. The better of them is the one who gives the greetings of salam first. And subhanAllah, especially in a small community like ours, we can't afford anything like this. We Muslims in Estonia, we form only 0.5% of the whole population. We have, to, we have to stick together. We just need unity and we need it badly. So be that bigger person. Think about someone you're not talking to anymore because of an old conflict or argument and be the one to reach out first. And do it today. Even better, do it right after the Jumu'ah prayer, inshallah, before you leave the masjid. Just take your phone and send a message to that brother or sister or your family member that you don't talk to anymore. Or even someone who has wronged you or someone you have wronged. Or just someone you had an argument with and aren't talking ever since. And it doesn't have to be some kind of traumatic way that makes both of you uncomfortable. It can, be, it can just be a really casual message. Something like, Assalamu alaikum bro. I'm sorry if I said something that upset you. I just hope you're doing good and may Allah bless you. Something simple like that is sometimes all that it takes. And yet we put it off and before we know this years go by and we haven't talked to a brother who we used to be friends with, subhanAllah. So when someone has wronged you, be ready to let go and forgive as it's better for you and it expiates your sins. It's been reported that the Prophet Muhammad wasallam said, whoever suffers injury to his body by someone in any way and he leaves it for the sake of Allah, it will be an expiation for him. And the same goes with any kind of pain that someone has caused you. For example, if someone has hurt you emotionally, same applies here. You leaving it for the sake of Allah is better for you and expiates your sins. So dear brothers and sisters, let us all make forgiveness a big part of our lives, both through asking for Allah's forgiveness as well as forgiving each other. May Allah forgive us all of our sins, those we are aware of and those we are not. May He make forgiving others and letting go of our grudges easy for us. إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم ورد عن الصحابة أجمعين وعن الخلفاء الراشدين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن سائر أصحاب نبيك أجمعين وعن التابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم ورد عنا بمنك وكرمك ورحمتك يا رحم الراحمين اللهم ألف بين قلوب المسلمين على الحق يا رحم الراحمين اللهم اشفي مرضى المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات اللهم يا هادي اهتنا جميعا واهت عائلاتنا وأقرباءنا ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطانا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به وعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وأقم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر
اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان محمد رسول الله اشهد ان محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاه حي على الصلاه حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله So, yeah, Tadilo, please, brothers, please close the gaps between the feet. Allahu Akbar Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Malik Yawm Al-Din Iyaka Na'abudu wa Iyaka Nasta'een اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفره إنه كان توابا الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر